Hello everyone, well here we are, we've got a brand new setup, I've got the new computer installed and this is the first video on camera that I have uh, done with this new setup, we're using OBS uh, for the screen recording, uh, I've got a new webcam, got a new microphone, whole new setup and so uh, here we go and uh, for the very first video on this auspicious day uh, that we're going to bring you with this uh, new uh, with this new equipment new, new tech uh, is going to be the ECMWF uh, 30 day forecast uh, for Europe actually it's a six week forecast but uh, we call it like 30 day four week forecast because uh, that's what it used to be <laughs> but um, we'll actually extend out to weeks five and six with this uh, as well I should get on with it for you in a moment uh, just say that first year so it's our nice little 7am uh, upload so have a look at that if you have not yet done so and we're going to be back later on to 10 to 14 down that will include all of the regular uh, features right so i've got to remember to turn off i've got a different way of turning off the webcam uh for this so uh, i'm going to go to uh video capture and there we go webcam is gone right so uh let's begin then and see how it goes obviously this is just this is just, this is just going to be like trial and error uh, while we get uh, used to the new uh, software and whatnot. So uh, we have still got a screen highlighter though. Uh, I, I wasn't prepared to get rid of that. Um, so here we go. This is uh, week one then uh, in terms of being sale of pressure anomalies taking us from the uh, 10th through to the 17th of May. The coming week looks quite unsettled with below average heights across much of northern and western Europe or low pressure I suppose. It's a mean sale of pressure anomaly. Um, but it will have below average heights as well actually. Have we had in a moment uh, across northern and western uh, Europe. There's some blocking up towards Greenland and Iceland. Some high pressure out of Spain and Portugal uh, as well. And this uh, low pressure extending into the east of Europe uh, also. So clearly we're pushing the jet stream through. It's just basically quite an unsettled uh, week to come. It's how the 500 millibar height anomaly is looking, and indeed it is unsettled for northern and western Europe. Plenty of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic into the north and the west of Europe. Again, we've got the higher pressure down towards uh, our south. We've got some higher pressure up towards our northeast as well. And again, in comes that westerly uh, jet stream. So you can see that it is quite clearly an unsettled week for much of northern and western Europe. It's also quite a cool week across western Europe, but warmer, hotter actually, for eastern and northeast Europe. So much just Scandinavia and uh, eastern and northeastern Europe. So from Scandinavia through to northwest of Russia, really, um, coming out warmer than average there. Meanwhile, it's cooler than average, though, on the western side of Europe. So for Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal, uh, cooler than average through those areas. I mean, coming down into the Mediterranean, it's largely cooler than average through much of the Med as well. Although it does get a little bit hotter as we move over into this extreme southeastern corner of uh, Europe. Let's just put on uh, the uh, anomalies. Uh, right, we'll go through to precipitation. This our precipitation is looking uh, for week one, taking us from the uh, 10th through to the 17th of May. So largely wetter than average, actually, for many northern and western parts of Europe. Again, not a surprise, we're bringing low pressure in off the Atlantic. So from like Ireland, right way over towards uh, Poland, it's largely above average with precipitation, particularly wet across southern parts of France into uh, northern Italy, interestingly. Uh, northern Spain, a little bit wetter than average, and Portugal, but down into southern parts of Spain, it's uh, dry and average there, into a central bowl of the Meg. Looks like lots of big showers and thunderstorms coming through there. More on the drier side, I think, for many of these eastern uh, parts of Europe. So it's so a little bit drier through eastern Europe, but otherwise, uh, it's quite an unsettled week across many parts of Europe this week. Right, so that's uh, week one done. Let's have a look at week two. This is going to take us from the 17th through to 24th of May. We're looking unsettled uh, once again across much of uh, Northern Europe. So again, we see it, the low pressure in off the Atlantic into Northern Central and Western Europe too. Some higher pressure down towards Spain and Portugal. Also some higher pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland. Income uh, westerly winds uh, once again. And this area of low pressure is extending into more eastern, southeastern parts of Europe once more. So it looks like another unsettled week, really, for many parts of uh, Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly from the 17th to the uh, 24th of May is also looking unsettled for much of northern Europe below. Average heights from the Atlantic here into northern and west Europe. Higher pressure with the 
is also high, reaching into Spain and Portugal, but not able to push any further north. We have got quite a warm ridge over on the eastern side of Europe, but presumably will bring up some quite warm air into the east of Europe, but otherwise looking relatively cool and unsettled. Week 2 temperature anomalies on the 17th to 24th of May are looking like that. So, uh, again, we're looking at rather colder than average conditions across many central western parts of Europe. So, below average temperatures uh, for UK, for Ireland, for France, for Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, Germany, up to Denmark uh, as well. And also down into the central bowl of the Mediterranean, anywhere from like the Holly Islands of uh, Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza, all the way over towards the Adriatic and the, Bal um, the Balkans. Um, below average, and even down into all parts of Greece, it's below average too. However, further east and northeast, was it's a warmer than average scene, hotter than average scene there, uh, right way from Turkey and the Black Sea, all the way up towards the Baltic Sea. And also we have southern parts of uh, Spain into North Africa looking rather hot. The uh, precipitation anomaly for week two from the 17th to 24th of May is coming out wetter than average uh, again. So again, lots of low pressure in off the Atlantic, bringing wetter than average conditions into much of northern, central and also West Europe. Some of that wet weather is pushing over towards the east and southeastern part of Europe as well. You have to go right way over towards the Black Sea to find dry and average conditions extending down in towards, uh, in towards Turkey. And also we've got uh, uh, we've got Spain and Portugal looking dry and average with that ridge from from the Azores. A central bar of men, especially around Italy, and again over the Adriatic into the Balkans, looking uh, rather wetter than normal. Right, let's do week three then. Uh, it's going to take us from the 24th of May to the 31st, last day of the month. Bit of a change uh, for this last week of May, with higher pressure beginning to uh, appear across uh, northern and western parts of Europe. So we've got some higher pressure building through the north and through the west of Europe in this week. Um, weaker pressure, though, for sort of east and southeastern parts of Europe until we get to this area of higher pressure uh, down towards the southeast of Med, and some lower pressure perhaps starting to threaten in towards uh, southern Spain and North Africa. But clearly this is more of an anticyclonic uh, type week for week three. Week three, 500 millibar height anomaly shows that area of above average heights, high pressure building across northern and western Europe. It also extends over towards the east of Europe. This white area just here could be some sort of shallow trough within uh, the 500 millibar flow. This should be turning warmer, I would have thought, across western Europe. Not really. The temperature anomaly is still looking <laughs> rather suppressed and depressed, actually. So uh, my guess about that is right. I mean, that's probably a bit pessimistic, I would have thought, with that ridge building. It is likely to be a little bit warmer than that across Western Europe. But uh, the model itself is showing like average to cooler than average temperatures from Ireland, the UK and France, all the way over towards uh, Poland and probably further eastwards uh, of that. The far east into west of Russia, really, I mean, down to the Black Sea and into the Middle East and, and just into like the eastern part of the Mediterranean. Hotter than average you there. Much of a central bar of the Med looks pretty cool. Of course, it's a warm time of the year, even then. Uh, these are anomalies to average. So it should still be relatively uh, warm, uh, maybe even quite hot in the central bowl of the med, um, but below average with the temperature anomaly there, and uh, hotter than average though through many parts of Spain, precipitation-wise, for uh, week three, which is 24th to 31st of May. It looks mostly on the drier than average side for northern and western parts of Europe, albeit with a slightly weakening signature. But many northern and western parts of Europe are coming out drier and average, wetter than average over the eastern side of Europe and near normal uh, elsewhere for precipitation. Right, let's move through to week four. This is the 31st of May to the 7th of June. Weakening signals here. We've still got some uh, hints of blocking up towards Greenland and Iceland, but also got a ridge uh, across the central parts of Europe and down to central Mediterranean. Otherwise, the signals are weaker. Maybe the pressure gets a little bit weaker there in week four. 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. It gets a weakening signal, possibly taking the heights back up towards Greenland, though, which might start to bring in some lower pressure into the north and west of Europe. It doesn't really show that, but it's a possibility when you've got that sort of blocking around Greenland. Week 4 temperature anomaly, a bit of a north-south split, so many southern parts of uh, Europe looking a little bit on the milder or hotter than average side. Northern parts of Europe looking a little bit on the cooler side. Again, the signals are getting weaker the further out we're going, but clearly it's still potentially quite cool, even in the start of June, across much of northern Europe. Precipitation-wise, uh, we look like that. So, uh, again, it's driving average 
in many southern parts of uh, Europe, much of the mid looking dry right now. So it's could be turning into a hot to dry week for, for like uh, southern Europe. But again, northern Europe, there isn't all that much of a signal. Right, so that's the 30 day forecast done. We will extend out further though. Let's go to week five. This is going to take us from the 7th to the 14th of June. Um, again, quite weak signals in northwest Europe. There's some higher pressure here through central parts of Europe. Uh, again, lower pressure to west of uh, to west of um, Spain and Portugal. Otherwise, pressures are weak in terms of the 500 millibar height anomaly. Uh, maybe hinting at building up some higher pressure uh, across the western part of Europe, some above average heights anyway across uh, across Western Europe. Lower pressure up towards Scandinavia that might start to send jet stream northwards, perhaps bringing something a little bit warmer. Up the western side of Europe. Let's see what the temperature anomaly uh, is doing. So this again from the seventh to the fourteenth of June. So it is turning hotter across France and down Spain and Portugal. Many parts of the Med becoming hotter as well. But cooler, cold and average temperatures sort of receding a little bit further north. So that looks like it's generally sort of warming up week there through uh, the first week, uh, through the second week, I should say, of June. Precipitation-wise, weak signals, or driest weather, looks like it's through uh, the central bowl of, of the mayor, particularly around Italy and that sort of area. Right, go through the week uh, six. Finally, this is going to be the 14th to 21st of June. Signals are getting ever weaker, so not really enough to work with in terms of mean silver pressure. In terms of 500 millibar heights, uh, just hints at some higher pressure uh, to the west of Europe and out into the Atlantic. Still, still a bit of a trough over Scandinavia. Might start to pull in like a northwest southeast alignment to a jet stream that could begin to bring something a little bit cooler into western, uh, northwestern Europe. The uh, temperature anomaly looks like that. So the, those world average temperatures never get much further northwards than France, really. They're, they're around this sort of western, southwestern part of Europe. But go further northwards, it still hints at being a little bit on, on the cool side. Uh, there, to be honest, and precipitation wise, lastly, that's how we look. So, uh, yeah, let's try it through western parts of Europe, near normal for northern Europe. Obviously, the further out we go, the weaker the signals are getting. Right, let's put the webcam uh, back up and see how that went. So, hello, I'm back. Uh, right, so uh, it looks like we're still in for more cool uh, mixed weather, uh, really, across uh, many parts of northern and western Europe for, for the rest of May. Low pressure still in the ascendancy. We get into June. There are hints here that we might get some higher pressure building into particularly uh, southwestern and western parts of Europe. Northern Europe, Scandinavia, looks like it stays unsettled, even into June with that trough of low pressure. Um, but possibly getting getting a little bit drier, possibly getting a little bit uh, warmer, perhaps as we move into June. But for the rest of May, looks as it has been doing for quite some time, uh, which is uh, pretty mixed, to be honest. Maybe just a snapshot of what these uh, models are showing. They could all look very different uh, next week. So any forecast beyond, uh, or this model, I should say, is shown. Any forecast beyond five, seven days uh, comes with uh, big health warning. Um, so, so yeah, you know, it could look different next week. But I think the ECM has been performing quite consistently over the past uh, over the past few weeks, as has the other long-range output, like the CFS uh, as well, I think. So um, we shall see. Uh, that's it for this week's uh, European Outlook. Anyway, uh, for, for the next month, for the next six weeks, uh, we're going to be out there trying to change 14 day. That will include all of regular features. But uh, for this ECMW, our 30 day forecast, that's all for now. And thank you so much uh, for watching. Bye for now and see you later.